We've got an instrument just rolled in the door. Um, I need a script. I never can't remember what I'm going to say. It's a 2011 F-150 with an EcoBoost 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. Uh, I don't know what the mileage is. It's had an engine put in it. And now the check engine light's on and it's got a P0016, uh, something to do with cam timing. Someone else diagnosed it. And um, there's a TSB to put a timing chain kit in it because the chain stretches and your cams get out of whack. I, I guess uh, that's what I'm being told. Do you hear? Yeah, we'll put it right on lift. Uh, rear axle seal on the F550. Great. Uh, where was I? Yeah, so um, the, one that, the company that bought the junkyard engine to put in this truck or they're they're backing the engine they want to know you know is the time chain stretched so I removed the right hand valve cover and went in with a boroscope to look at the amount of tensioner that is sticking out to push on the chain let's have a look at that there is a the truck not a bad looking truck Typical four-wheel drive F-150. And we removed the rain valve cover so we can look down in and see the, uh, the time and chain tensioner, which is way down in there. Now you can see it. I could see it. I could see the teeth. I don't know if you'll be able to see it though. If I zoom in. Let me try. Let me try to zoom in. There's the tensioner and the teeth that are exposed. And the general rule of thumb is anything over five is stretched way beyond serviceable use. And we have six teeth showing. Now let's check it out with the borescope. They still want me to tear the thing apart. I took it, I took the valve cover off and looked down in there to see the tensioner is just out as far as it can possibly go. That ain't enough for them. They're like, we want the time cover off. We want to look at the guides. We want to look at the gears. We want to look at the whole nine. And I said, okay, no problem. Give me, give me 30 minutes. <laughs> So this is my boroscope, and it's just a cable. And I've just got it stuck to a screwdriver because it's really flexible. And when you're going, depending on where you're going with it, um, it can curl up on you. So I just taped it to my screwdriver. There's the end of it, and it's that's the business end. And then this is just a USB. Connects to any smartphone. So you plug it in. Easier said than done. And we are in operation. And it looks like that. Get rid of that glare here. And now we're get rid of the ads. And now we're borescoping. So right now I'm looking at that wall over there. And then so there's that label. 
Hey, right here, let me film this real quick. I need your assistance while I'm doing this. Look in, look through the viewfinder here and just make sure this thing stays in focus and is not glared up too bad. Let me turn this light off. So, I mean, it looks, you know, somewhat presentable. Uh, it, let me get in there first, hold on. Oh, I'll see what you're doing. Yeah, okay. see, I'm filming that. Yeah, I got you. Because I'm, I'm showing this boroscope tool. Oh, that wasn't the fuck is going on <laughs> here. All right, so, let me do another narrating here. So I'm just gonna take this, can you see this? Like, yeah. Can you see it now? Yeah. So I'm just gonna take this and uh, go down in between the chiming chain. And we'll see if we can see this uh, tensioner t teeth on this tensioner doodad thingy. Little well, Bob. All right, so that right there is the tensioner. And that's the guide, and that's the body of the tensioner. And the tensioner goes out. How's my finger looking there? And as, these, as the chain wears or whatever, uh, the tensioner will go out further and expose these teeth. And these teeth keep it from going back in. So when you shut your vehicle down, it won't you know, rattle in the morning. It'll stay you know, tension on the chain. And we've got six teeth exposed right there, which is uh, about five too many. I'll show you where I've got this thing. If you look down in there, you can see I've got the screwdriver tied to the boroscope, and it goes way down in there, and you can see the light on it. And that's what we're looking at, and that's what we see. This has got a warranty company, and they want to tear this thing down and examine the chain and pulleys and all that good mess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now to replace the chain, it pays roughly nine hours. That's Ford's time. I mean, Mitchell time may pay even more, but uh, we're looking at nine hours to replace with a timing chain. Uh, to put this in perspective, anytime I'm looking to see how hard a job is or what's involved, I just look at labor time. Uh, to give you an idea, uh, a 1995 Ford Contour. The labor time for a water pump is four hours. A 1996 Contour labor time is about eight tenths. So the difficulty level between one year models, a lot. You know, the, the 95 was a real pain in the neck to get the water pump off of, whereas they redesigned it in 96 to make it a whole lot easier. Stuff like that. Uh, put this job in perspective, um, when the six liter debuted in 2003, Ford's Warranty published labor time to take the in, drive the vehicle in the shop, take the engine out, replace the engine, or put the engine back in and drive it out it was a hair over 12 hours. 12 hours to do all that work. And this job to be the time of chain, only the time of chain, is nine hours. Just a couple hours shy of what it pays warranty time to pull an engine out of a, a six liter diesel. So it's involved, it's really involved. So what I'm getting at is I'm trying to say I'm going to take the cab off this truck to access the engine. I can spend I don't spend very much time at all getting these cabs off. I'm going to film it. You guys can watch, uh, see what's involved. But it's super easy to get it out of the way. It's the cab's studded, um, so there's no alignment on it. Once you take it off, it goes right by. It, if it goes in, if it's not lined up when you get done, it's because it was in an accident. You know, I mean, it's, it has to go back. You know, with a Super Duty, you can put the cabin bed like that. What the heck was I saying? Let's say I spend two hours taking the cab off and putting it back on. That leaves me seven hours working on the engine where I can stand up in front of it and get to everything. And I'm like leaning over the radiator and just frustrated. Um, you know, this thing's got a stretchy belt on it. It's got this idiotic crank pulley. I mean, it's like they just tried to build these things different from anybody else for whatever reason. Uh, the reasons to frustrate mechanics. So, um, let's pull the cab. So first things first, got the battery cable disconnected, vehicle's in neutral. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of everything underneath the truck. I don't want to be under the truck um, 
at all. I, you know, once I bring it down, I'm gonna do what's under the hood, and then lift the truck. So, excuse me, lift the cab.
that truck. Yeah. He's watching me. I mean, uh, he says that the meat over there about the lost motion. And he says, well, I carried somewhere and they tied up that nut and all. He said, it's still loose as hell. The nut's not for adjustment. The nut is for. They tighten up the, the second nut? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, they tighten up that. See, so now you probably don't have any returnability. Loose plate. And he said he carried it somewhere and they tightened up the nut on the steering gear. Fucking gears,
slide out the ABS connector and the bottom radiator hose. All right, and lift it. I want as much weight on this lift as far back as possible. So it's an asymmetric lift. I don't want the body way up front because it's going to be front heavy. So my goal is to get the body as far back as possible and still lift it. So I'm going to work completely off of this front arm. So the front arm is going to be retracted as far as it can. In other words, I don't want the arm way out. However far I can retract it is going to dictate how far I can roll the truck backwards. There's always a snag in this process. A lot of times things can't go smooth. And I didn't pay attention, this thing has running boards. Um, no big deal, right? However, that running board extends past the body and under the bed. And it will hit the bed. Right there, not good. I won't be able to lift the body up enough to roll the truck back. And I've already took the thing off the lift. It would have been easier to drop those running boards when it was on the lift. So, this kind of hinders the process and makes the process longer. But those running boards gotta come off. It, it cannot be lifted with those on there. Got the running boards off. Um, spring down, set the lift back up, and try it again. Thing goes into turbo mode when we uh, when you bring it down.
Now ideally when taking these off, I would want <clears throat> this lift arm as close as possible to here. But I'd already set it up with the running boards in mind and I'm not going to be back here too much because the lower this lift arm is from body, the more you know you're you know, you're going to be bumping into it with your noggin. So um, this lift would have gone. This lift, if I'd put the pad all the way here, well, yeah, it'd clear it. This lift would be. This arm would be closer to the bottom of the body here. But I'm really wanting to access this front here. And, um, you know, it's just, it's just much easier. I mean, this is really, really easy to get to now and access everything. Um, you know, so now I can work on it with, you know, basically my little 3 8 impact. I can you know, rip the valve covers off, lean right in here, get the balancer off, these belts. Uh, the stretchy belt for the AC compressor, all this plumbing, this ridiculous amount of plumbing uh, going to the charge air cooler. And uh, pull the front cover, get to the chain, and then the warranty company can figure out what they want to do. And if they want to put another engine in it, it's super easy to get this thing out. I mean, you could put a complete engine in, just come right in with a chair picker and drop it in. That's really, really easy to do. You don't have to fight with the body and take the radiator out and all that mess. So it's just one way of doing it. I mean, there's many different ways. Uh, I think these things come off really easy. Uh, you don't have to mess with the front bumper. You just got these two bolts here. Bolt there and a bolt there. And then the hood release for the secondary latch. Um, two transmission cooler lines. Bottom hose, top hose, heater hoses two AC lines, wiring, uh, steering shaft, brake master, yeah, it's just, it's not that difficult. Like I said, this is, see these are the studs and they only go in, they get, one way is it, they drop down, they line right up, you're either in or you're, you're not. Um, part brake cable, which is super easy with that tool I've got. I'll put a link in the description of the tool number. Set this master. I usually wire tie this over out of the way to the uh, lift arm. Basically, I'm trying to keep the mash on upright so it doesn't leak out fluid out of the cap and trying to keep the lines in a relaxed, relaxed matter. So it takes care of that and uh, we're going to call it an evening and start again Monday, day 